Hey, this is Lisa Ray, and guess what? Wendy's not all that bad. In fact, she's kind of great. Okay, Artie, where's my money? <laughs> Hello. All right, bring our guests in, honey, because I understand Jason Williams is bitter and ready to drop it like it's hot on the band. In addition, in today's newspapers, every place, it's blown up that, um, you know, about Puffy's child uh, support. A child support case um, of his monthly child support payments, a ruling by the uh, state Supreme Court, shaved $13,000 off his monthly payments. So... Good for him. He's saving $13,000 a month. He's still responsible for paying his ex-girlfriend slash the woman who graced me. Thank you, Misa, with an interview in my book, The Wendy Williams Experience. He's still responsible for paying Misa, mother of Justin, his oldest, $21,782 a month. Oh, and eight cents a month. Last year, he was ordered to pay her $35,000 a month, plus $400,000 in the rears. And a $60,000 attorney fee. The new discount payment, they say, is still almost four times as much as the uh, $5,000 a month that he was breaking her off before she decided to sue his behind when she found out that Kim Porter, um, his baby's mother, and Al B. Shore's baby's mother, but Al's not paying for his kids, so Puffy does. Kim Porter's making uh, $30,000 a month in child support off Puffy. So, Puffy, you save a little bit of money. But uh, Jason Williams is about to throw you under the bus. Make sure you got all the uh, whistles and bells ready. Yeah. Come on. Hustle him around here. Diva. Hurry up, Franny. Open the door so I can see him walk. Franny, 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 Franny. 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 And he's bringing one of these chicks from the band. Now, you know I don't really watch this show, so I don't know who this chick is, but she's one of the girls, I guess, who's been cut. And, um, all right, open the door. Get out of his way so I can see him sashay in. Work, 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 work. Turn. I had tuna fish for lunch with extra onions. I'm sorry for my smell. That's okay, baby. These are for you. Fabulous. And, um, Allison Williams, Williams said that you guys got to go shopping for shoes. I love Allison Williams. She's a big foot Here's size 11 like me. Here's all the emails. Now, who is this girl right here? Hi, honey. Hi, this is Patty. Hi, Patty. Now, what is Patty, um, lending to the conversation? Yeah, we're on the radio now. Um, no, sit down. This is your seat. Zhuzh your microphone around for Patty uh, Hollywood. Zhuzh your microphone yeah, for Patty. Now, I don't know. No, not on that side. Oh, She's on the... No, yes, please. Oh, That's like her standing behind the cash register if she was a... Uh, if it's the food town. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, okay. yeah, Patty was on the show. She okay. was one of the girls because you know no one likes me on the show. Yes. Everyone hates me. Okay. All right. Now, let's get right into it. First of all... <clears throat> During your interview, I understand you were sweating like a pig. Were you nervous or was it hot in Puffy's office? I was nervous and it was hot. And I, I actually, what started off is that I started, I came in as, um... He Lori, doesn't need headphones. We're not going to ask him to freestyle. No, L- Ann's assistant. Oh, um, he's... I, I was Ann's assistant at choreo- as a choreographer. Okay. She brought me in to get me to audition for the thing, so I thought. Okay. Um, there you go. Yeah, bring your whole chair forward. She, I like you. I like she, your look. She, she she also um she also so she she called me up and she wanted me to come in. She told me that she had been calling me and Puffy had been listening to me on the phone. Uh-huh. So you know when you're talking to your friends, you're really real, right? So they got to see the real me from hear the real me. So when I came into the room, he was kind of smiling, I guess, because he was able to put a face yes to what he had heard. Yes, yes. And he asked me certain questions, such as um. What would you do if there's five girls in a house and two of them are arguing and they need to get to the airport? Mm. And I then said I would tell those bitches to wrap their hair up like Erica by doing get a sheet and use it as a fucking charong. I don't know if I can say that. I'm sorry. But that's what yeah, I you're said. You're about to be thrown out. I apologize. On your big freckle behind. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So that's what you would say. Um, so the choreographer, Lorianne. Now, she used to date Andre Harrell? Yeah, she did. Did she? Did Andre ever show up on the show? No. Neither did Buffy. Oh. I mean, he didn't show up as far as um, 
When I got to the house, there was only... The girls had been in the house for like two weeks. The producers took, took me in the back control room, made me look at all the monitors, pointed out Lachey and Yaya, and said, these girls have not been... Um, they, they've had confrontation, but they haven't really confronted each other. Can you do something about that? To and, make them confront each yeah, other? Yeah, they said the girls haven't had no drama. It hasn't been no drama. I don't even think we have a show. They said that... Um, oh. I never thought that having 19 girls in a house that it would be no arguments. They told me to make the girls get my bags and I looked at they told me to make the girls get my bags out the vestibule okay. and I thought they was going to roll in a, an expensive Chester drawer okay. because my mother never said Jason get in here and clean, pick up the trash out the vestibule. Right. So I didn't know what it was. Right. So I went in and put my own lines in like could you be a lamb and scurry out there and get my bags out the vestibule. Okay. I, was, I was going in to, for the character like All About Eve yes. the man who came to dinner. Yes. I was trying to be comedic. Yes. Yes. So yes. I was trying to give them that because I thought Puffy wanted I thought the high drama, wanted, high but, drama but from if your... he wanted to I really respect Puffy, mm. first of all. Mm. And I would have loved to learn from him and I would learn he should have been there to tell me what he really wanted me to do. I wouldn't have played a mammy in the year 2005 yes. when it's quote unquote supposed to be reality television. Okay. Especially when Holly Berry and Jamie Foxx and people like that are winning awards. Yes. So you, you you caused fights within the house because they asked you to. I wouldn't say that I caused fights well, within the house. You did ask the girls to throw away um, their food, which I thought was funny. I it was did tempting only you. because only because they told they told me that Puffy did not like the girls. He was going to Atlanta. They rehearsed with Lorianne a couple of times. Um, they went to the gym, but all in all, they're just sitting around. They gave me this basket of bread. And I said, well, then why are we doing bringing in bread, honey? We should be taking the cars out of the house. Right. I said, well, because I'm looking like a whale, honey. My stomach is to my knees. I need to take the carbs out of the house because I'm going on a diet. At least if my friends see that I've gained so much weight, they will see me going to the gym every day, which okay. they never showed me going to the gym every day at 6 o'clock. Wow. With Patty and some of the other girls. Okay, okay. So it was a setup. So now, who actually fired you? Who from, actually from fired the me? Making of the band is Jason well, Williams. Actually, everybody. Actually, um, they, um, one of the directors, Zoe, um, told me that you are effing incredible. Okay. You, um, you, you magnify. You're so amazing on screen. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you. Our confrontation, you got to get back in the back and let them talk about you. You know, you can't, um, you can't just keep it going. Because I was doing three, three, three hour long meetings. I was really giving them ins inspirational conversations, telling them about the business, right. letting them know. But they right. cut all of that out. So, what girls? Are left. What girls are left? Yes, because this is a little inside track, okay. and as long as you're here, I would like to know. Malika, the one that changes her wigs, it looks like she's been dug out of the ground. Okay. Then you've got um, um, Marsha's Jan and Cindy, which is Aubrey and Andrea, and um, who is it, Francesca? I like um, Francesca and El um, Eileen, uh -huh. and I love Jamila. Jamila was the Jamila and. Um, Malika was the only black girls that were left, which was, I was so outdone when I walked on the show, first of all. Wow. And there was no, first of all, I love Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, and people like that. So maybe it was me. Maybe uh -huh. I do owe them an apology because my expectations must have just been too high. I was expecting some real talent. <laughs> How many people are supposed to be in the final band? Except there were a few talent people. I don't want to, um... Right, I hate like that. Right, there was right. Patty and um, Tay Tay and Jamila that actually could sing, but you never saw them. So at the end of the, the, the show, how many people were are you narrowing? Or were they narrowing it down to for this band? Four, three, five, four. That's, that's first it. of all, I don't know because I don't know how those people could have looked at Puffy and told them, or even tell the American public that those are the best talent around the world because everyone knows that there's a Samika Renee Johnson at somebody's Mount Calvary Baptist Church yeah, yeah. that can sing like Whitney that we're looking for. And I thought he really wanted a hit group. I thought he really wanted someone that is passionate. I, I see that all his people want to um, sit on his yachts, drink his champagne, and sleep with his leftovers. I would have been grateful to stay back and work uh, now now uh, <laughs> uh by the way did puffy give you uh, uh, any did you gator go off when you were in puffy's presence puffy was never there oh that's right damn you had well, you had your i'm, go sorry, off I'm anyway? sorry you you had um you had um 
um, what's his name? What um, Lorianne, whose stamp, whose lips was a stamp, and she was kissing Puffy's butt. Well, um, uh, yeah, I thought the Lorianne was dating Puffy. Yeah, that's his new girlfriend. Now, did you get any? Uh, uh, you know, because well, there's, there's a, there's a story Lorianne. allegedly Lorianne about you and Puffy and something under the desk, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Who, now, do who, you who, do you who, um, who under the desk? Me and Puffy? No, 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 no. I'm talking to Lorianne out in the audience. Oh, I'm well, sure I'm, she's listening. I'm sure she was under the desk. She's good at under being under the desk and on her back. Oh. Where's the bomb if it's so old? Well, that was bomb worthy. But you know, and she's known to, um, she should actually be called the superhero, the recycler, because she has recycled so many people's choreography and called it her own. And she's very known <laughs> right. for getting people to come in in pre-production stage and do the choreography and then fire them. And then when she gets, and anyway, she choreographs for Alicia Keys. Who wants to see her dance? We want to see her at her piano singing. That's what, any performance yeah. that she's done, we don't remember her dancing. <laughs> no, I don't. That, that she ever dance? And Brandy, I think Brandy lost her deal after the last video Lorian choreographed. Oh. <laughs> You've got the right one. I guess you got Diva Talk with Wendy and Jason on Friday. Well, how many dead mothers were interviewed before you were picked? Because I know Samore's manager yes. was one of the dead mothers interviewed. The thing about that is everyone was holding back. I talked to one of the um, dead mothers at audition, and he said he was not going to be a flamboyant gay person, but it seems like that would that's what he wants. Puffy told me to be you. Uh -huh. Be you. I like what you're doing. Be you. Were all the den mothers uh, gay? gay? <laughs> I guess uh, there's they the mother straight. in mm -hmm. I don't think so. There might have been one or two, but I don't even mm -hmm. think there was one or two. Mm -hmm. So, so what, how, how, who do you think is going to actually be in this, the final group? Or do, who do you know? You know what? I'm thinking that Oh, it's, he bats his eyes. I, it's crazy. I'm thinking it's He's just a dream. a dream. No pun intended. Yeah, I know what you're saying. In other words, to put the group together, nothing will end up happening. And, and it'll be like the other group dream. Yeah. Or like was dream. that a dream? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I thought they wanted hits, not misses. Did you ever meet Fonsworth Bentley? I actually, oh, actually, I saw Puffy. You know what? That's why I can't really diss Puffy to the... To, to, the way some people want me to to to, to diss him, right? Because I Us. saw him at I was doing the um, rip the runway at BET mm -hmm. after I got um, fired off the show. Oh, did and you see Eva and Missy yes, all I, clinked I, up together? No, I didn't. See okay, that. I did see Eva and um, Bentley there. Okay, um, and Puffy, Missy was off in the cut. I didn't see Missy there. At all. I don't think Missy was there. All right. I, don't, I didn't see her. But Puffy came in, and I called his name. His bodyguard was there. He came over, shook my hand, gave me a little dap, and mm. said, um, and I said, I don't want you to think that I was just wilding out on your show. Um, I really wanted to talk to him. I was hoping that he would have taken the time to at least give me 10 minutes to at least give me the benefit of the doubt like I'm giving him, because I'm not going to crush him on live radio. Right. Because there's probably young Afro-American boys that look up to him that probably want to learn from him like other people have done like right, myself. Right. And I'm not going to do that to him. Right, right. Because he's only been... The times I've met him, he was respectful to me. I believe that MTV showed him dailies of what they wanted him to see. If okay. I would have saw that, okay. I would have said that, okay, if that's all I would have saw yes. and wouldn't have saw anything like right. how can I be on a show for 13 days and the sh all the shows are 10 episodes, that's only five hours. That's not even one day's worth of footage. Right. You guys can do the math. So they cut it down and made you appear a certain they way. Appeared, they made me appear to be a crazy, irate queen. <laughs> and all I did was scream and holler every minute of the day, which is not true. We stayed up at 5 o'clock in the morning, gut-wrenching laughs. People were crying on my shoulders. One of the girls, the grandmother died. And I don't think anyone from MTV, I don't think when Patty's mother passed away, it kind of I kind of thought that MTV was waiting for it to happen on camera. But what? when her mother did pass uh -huh. away, it was me that wrote her. It was the other girl that's voice was out. Yeah. It was me that made them take her to the hospital. Well, it's Jason Williams, everybody. Jason, thank you for coming in. Patty, Jason's talk for both of you. Yeah, I okay. wish you both well. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. We'll be back. Wendy, man. I met up with this guy. We were together. We were at his house. And why do you think his thing wouldn't work? Do you think maybe he's... How you doing? The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> WBLS. All right, wait, you know what? I just pulled um, Jason Williams from Making of the Band 3 and Patty, who was actually on the show, back into the room. Patty, first of all, sorry to hear about your mother. Thanks. Now, um, Patty is going to tell us 
co-sign basically with what Jason was saying. Tell me all about what was going on there in the house. Well, basically what it was is that a lot of the things that you didn't see went on like uh jason pretty much cooking three meals a day for us helping us out in whatever we needed uh waking us up to go work out at six in the morning you know what i'm saying he was there at least for me you know because i was you know it was a really critical time for me in the show because right. it was c sort of a catch-22 you know i had my mother who was dying yeah and then johnny right telling me well you know you have to pretty much concentrate on what you want which right. is my dream right so i was just like okay dear what do i do so um the whole time i was just lost and, you know jason and i he had my back. You mean Uncle Always, Tom? Like, I'm sorry. Consoling me and, and stuff I like that. That would be Johnny, right? Is Uncle Tom? Or Massa Reynolds, whatever you want to call him. Oh. <laughs> no comment on that one but uh -huh. um you know it, it was th that was basically i mean the way they did them like for yesterday's episode was pretty much i think messed up are you dominican no i'm puerto rican well i'm mi mixed puerto rican haitian french and irish <laughs> I said we never see all that. I just uh, we'll no. see Puerto Rican. I hear a little accent. Oh, okay. That's why I was asking. Yeah. So all in all, though, it was a good experience for you. Yeah, it was. It was an actually a great experience. I learned a lot. I, I you learned probably learned a lot about reality shows. Exactly. What you learned from Saw that show is the way <laughs> yeah. Amarosa was telling us for Apprentice, and the way it is for America's Next Top Model, and all these other shows. Correct. Yeah. So now, um, Jason, where do you go from here? Where are you? Where are you working? Where did you come from? Like, where were you work? Where were you working? Prior I was. I was a dancer. I was a dancer for 15 years. Okay. Um, I'm starting to manage right now. I'm doing actually doing a Take the Mic Night competition out here. If you're interested, it's a thousand dollars in cash and prize. We're gonna invite radio stations like this down, record company executives. Right. You can email me at jw9285 at hotmail.com for anything you would like to say, good or bad. I will write you back personally. Again, uh -huh. that's jw9285 at hotmail.com. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate you, Wendy, having me down here. I love you, Wendy. Thank you. I really do. Do. You Thank are you. the Della Diva of all Della Divas. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Jason. And Thank Patty, you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, too. And I like to see my guests walk out. And then um, let's make sure that they um, are in the other room. So you can do some drops with um, with Jason. Diva! Th that's what I'm Come saying. Come on, Miss Diva. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> Bye, Patty. Make sure you get, a, get another how you doing from the authentic how you doing man. <laughs> a mess. A mess. <laughs> oh boy, everybody, don't forget tonight the place to be is uh, Mount Vernon. I'm going to be hosting the WBLS live broadcast at a fabulously adult nightclub. It's called, and it's brand new, so don't hate yourself if you, uh, don't ask yourself, well, where have I been? No, it just opened up like three weeks ago, Lounge 42. And every Friday, WBLS is hosting the live broadcast, and it's for the grown and sexy, 23 and older for the ladies, and 25 and older for the men, and you must have proper attire. Uh, the proper attire, men, is hard bottom shoes, no sneakers. It's not that kind of party. Uh, ladies, jeans, and your stilettos are fine with a cute tank top. I'll see you at the party. Doors open up at 11 o'clock at, at Lounge 42, um, and then they close at 4 o'clock in the morning, and the BLS live broadcast starts at 1 o'clock in the morning. Lounge 42, located on 42 West Broad Street in Money Earning, Mount Vernon. I will see you there tonight. And this person says, Wendy, what is the dress code for Lounge 42? Jeans, Air Force Ones, white or black? Mm -mm. No Air Force Ones. Um... And as far as jeans, yes, jeans for the men or women, but you just have to throw them on with some hard bottoms or some sponge bottoms. You know? Or, or something. What are those things that, um, the, where's some wallies or, some, or something? Anything but some sneakers. Yes, and I'll see you there. The drinks are strong. The music's on. Brucey B's doing the music, and it's all happening tonight. The Lounge 42. It's so easy to get to. You, it's at exit um, number seven off of the Cross County Parkway. Also, a quick reminder to Harlem. Oh, are these more v VH1 passes? Or are these the same ones from last hour? No, it's different. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, we'll give these away in the next oh, local break. In the meantime, Harlem, uh, throughout the month of April, you can join Sunday Classics with Hal Jackson and Debbie B. And they're going to be hosting Harlem Nights at various venues. Now, tonight, they're hosting Harlem Nights from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. at a place called Londell's, which is at 2620 Frederick Douglass at um, 139th Street. Live performance by, uh, by Lonnie Youngblood. I found out, thanks to somebody faxing in, um, he used to play with war. Good God, what is it good for? Uh-huh. So that's tonight from 8 to 10 p.m.
at Londell's with Hal and Debbie and Lonnie Youngblood. 2620 Frederick Douglass at 139th Street Uptown in Harlem. All right, we're going to keep it moving. It's the Hour of Truth on the Wendy Williams Experience right here at 107.5 WBLS. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Dear Wendy, I faxed you yesterday, and I think you ignore me. It's not fair to the fans of the show to keep us in the dark. Where's Dave? If you can't go into detail, then at least let us know if he's ever coming back. Um, it is a love affair no longer. You know, I'm trying to be respectful of that man's situation. Dave is not coming back. Dave has left the building. That's it. It's a wrap. So enjoy your little best of rewinds because we're not going to pull them because he did give us, you know, some great funny moments, you know, but um, the show will press on and, um, you know, Dave is not here anymore. Wow. 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 That's all I can say. Right, Hollywood? Put that where? Back there. This is it right here. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Jason Williams uh, was uh, fun and interesting, but he's left the building, so let's move on. Tatum O'Neill went on a wild, liquor fueled lesbian romp on Wednesday night in the meatpacking district of Manhattan at a hot spot called Pop Burger. Pop Burger. Write that down. That's a hot spot. <laughs> Downtown, you might see the Tatum on her lesbian romp. It was at midnight, and she's 41. Of course, the daughter of Ryan O'Neill and ex wife of John McEnroe. Well, she waltzed into the restaurant. Um, a restaurant, by the way, where celebrities regularly frequent. And she, you know, got made her way to the bar and ordered Cosmopolitans. Apparently, not her first drink of the evening according to people who were there. It it wasn't very long after that that she spilled the drink all over a fellow customer. And instead of acknowledging what she had done, she strolled outside and smoked a cigarette. (laughs) Or something. (laughs) While managers um, went over and, you know, talked with the patron with the drink on him and gave a free cocktail to that person, Tatum O'Neill started chatting it up with a pretty... 30-something blonde woman that she met outside while she was smoking her cigarette. Tatum invited her new friend inside for a drink, and that's when the fun unfolded. They started, here's the quote, they started fooling around and were full on making out. Then she started feeling the girl's boobs and rubbing her crotch right there in front of everybody. Write down the name of this place. You never know what you're going to see, Pop Burgers, in the meatpacking district. It goes on to say, it got so graphic that the manager had to keep sending a waiter to the table to tell them to stop because they were causing a scene. The entire crowd at the joint was gawking at their steamy, graphic dalliance. Finally, Tatum and her lusty, busty, blonde girl that she just met outside when she was smoking a cigarette paid the tab, got up, and left together holding hands. All right. (laughs) All right. You know the guy um, who plays who played BP on The Sopranos. Um, I don't like to say the P word, so I'll say BP. Um, It rhymes with cushy. Okay. Um, big cushy. Well, in real life, his name is Vincent Pastore, and we've all heard that um, um, earlier this week, uh, the drama unfolded in the Little Italy section of Manhattan, where the girl, the girlfriend, was apparently in the passenger seat, and they got into some sort of fight because it's being alleged that she was late. Whatever, and, and and she was all lumped up, and he grabbed her by the hair and pushed her head into the head into the dashboard, and and you know lumped her up, and and then pushed her out of the car and left her and screeched off. Okay, well, there's more to the story, because apparently he's saying that he's ne- he never laid a hand on his actress girlfriend. Actress is just a word she's using. No, we don't know her, and the police. Um, say, however, that she sustained 
injuries in the brawl. Excuse me. The police say that they sustained devastating inju- injuries. Wait, let me read this. Uh, on the Soprano says he never laid a hand on his actress girlfriend who police say sustained devastating injuries during the brawl. Okay, so the girlfriend was all lumped up. The cops have it in their notes. But he's saying he never hit anybody. He's 58 years old. And her name is Lisa Regina. And um, here's his quote. Thank God, my mother in heaven, that I didn't put my hands on that woman. I only removed her from the car. <laughs> he, and thank God, my mother in heaven. That I didn't put my hands on that woman. I only removed her from the car. I'm the victim. I'm the guy who got beat up. I got scars on my chest, but I didn't go to the hospital and try to get pictures done because I was hoping this was going to go away. I was hoping that she had enough sense not to open up a can of worms. They charged me with a misdemeanor and people make out like I'm the new Robert Blake. I'm not a violent person, despite the characterization that you see on television during The Sopranos. I got to put excuse me i gotta make the front page of the new york post with handcuffs and my daughter and my family are devastated because i got involved with a ridiculous crazy insane woman because i'm in love with her god does this sound like a lie you know what he goes on to say i threw my life away over a woman everybody from the sopranos everybody in my family everybody's been telling me she's no good for you my life is a total 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 mess i can't sleep i can't work my family is in total shock but i was warned and now i've got to face the music in the meantime he uh she says i'm broke i'm broken broken hearted for him that's what she says and there's more to the story and that drama will unfold but i just got a sign i just didn't see what the sign said let me push my bangs aside oh yeah one minute one minute okay anyway uh the fight started in little italy apparently in the car, excuse me, on Saturday, it began when she sprang a surprise engagement party with her family on him. But he said that he had canceled their upcoming June wedding. That's what he said that she was upset about. She says that he got upset because she sprang this family party on him. And then he goes on to say, why are we going to Jersey to be with your family? We've never, we've never going to get married. We're never going to get married. Pastore told her as she began sobbing, banging the steering wheel in frustration. So she was the one apparently in the driver's seat. All right, let me finish this story for you. Uh, and we've got more. Did I talk with you yet about Red Man? No. See? See where we're going? See where we're going? Have we talked about Brittany and Kevin? See? See? There's more to the show. Mariah Carey. What? Are we truly finished? Absolutely not until we talk about Snoop. And, and Donald Trump's comments about Cameron Diaz and a smattering of other things. All right? So we're not finished. Keep it here. Thanks. It's windy, man. I want to your good at you. Watch you hit each other. The Wendy Williams Experience.